You're listening to the Life Like You Mean It podcast, episode number 27. How comfortable are you at tooting your own horn about the work you do, the skills you have, and what you've overcome? Despite being completely counterintuitive, so many entrepreneurs struggle with this every day. So the question becomes, how are you expecting to be successful without people knowing about how amazing you are and how what you offer will help them? Today we're talking about the reason behind this modesty and how to overcome it in order to get visible with your business. Because, to be honest, getting visible to your target audience is not just about great marketing or understanding your target audience. It's actually more about knowing yourself. My guest today, Anna Parker Naples, is a best-selling author, speaker, multi-award winning business coach and host of top iTunes podcast, Entrepreneurs Get Visible. She helps entrepreneurs and creatives to stand out from the crowd and get visible so they can have more confidence, influence, impact, and income. Anna knows the difference getting to know yourself makes on your business. Ten years ago, Anna was wheelchair-bound, being told by her doctors just how difficult her life was going to be, all the things she wasn't going to be able to do. Having to leave her husband and children to move into her parents' home, which was wheelchair-accessible, she fell into a downward spiral of pain, guilt, resentment, and grief. When she decided to get help to shift her mindset in order to physically progress, she found her way to a hypnotherapist and neurolinguistic programming, or NLP, practitioner. It was here that she realized that her language to herself and others was all centered around negativity. She was consistently speaking about the resentment, anger, and limitation. She told her therapist that she is always in pain that all she thinks and talks about is disability and pain. After she confronted those thoughts, realizing that she does think and talk about other things, her mind was open to how she may not be right about some of her other beliefs. And that's when she realized that those thoughts and beliefs didn't end with her personal situation. Her work was also affected by beliefs that were just not true, Understanding this and taking the time to really get to know herself opened the door for her to become wildly successful with her career and get visible in ways that she never dreamed of. Are you ready to learn how getting to know yourself is crucial to getting visible in your business? This episode is packed full of amazing tips and strategies that you can begin implementing today. So let's dive right in and let you meet my friend. Anna. You're listening to the Life Like You Mean It podcast, where we firmly believe that you and only you have the power to make the changes you seek in your life. Survivor of 10 years of child abuse, Lisa Sabanyas, will help you to empower yourself to overcome your limitations in whatever form they take to build the life you truly deserve. It's time to hear from fellow experts who know firsthand what building a successful and satisfying life because of our past experiences is life and exactly what it takes to do it. If you're ready, willing and able to get honest with yourself, roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty with the hard work that lasting change takes, you're in the right place. Here's your host, NLP practitioner, speaker, Reiki master, author, and chipaholic, Lisa Sabaniak. This episode is dedicated to the Coach's Code, a virtual course designed for coaches by a coach to teach you exactly what you need to do to double, even triple your income over the next 45 days. Learn the decision-making capabilities that top performing coaches utilize every day. By following this process, you'll discover the core belief that is keeping you in overwhelm and therefore not growing your income Learn the number one strategy that you must master, sales, and how to approach it so that you don't feel salesy. You'll discover what to do after hearing no to avoid going down a doubt spiral, how to spot new opportunities that are already around you, 
how to master the ability to quickly shift your mindset to achieve results, and so much more. If you know you're meant for greatness and are tired of spinning your wheels and grinding it out, welcome to The Coach's Code. Get more information and the link to register by going to lifelikeyoumeanit.com slash coaching course, all one word. That's lifelikeyoumeanit.com slash coaching course. This link will also be found in the show notes. And hello, Anna. Welcome to the Life Like You Mean It podcast. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Hey, Lisa. Great to be here. Thank you. I would like us to jump right in because, you know, you have this amazing business and your podcast and everything that you're doing. You've got such great success, but I think it's really important for people to understand that you've had to really struggle to get to where you are. So you were at one point wheelchair bound. Yeah, so... so I'd like to know more about that. A ten, ten year, we're recording this at the mid-December, and this time last year, unless this time ten years ago, I was told to expect that I would never walk again, and if I did, by some miracle, walk again, that I would be severely limited, and certainly, ha ha ha, never wear a pair of heels. <laughs> um, ha ha ha, and. Uh, it became about as a result of a pregnancy complication. I had something called SPD, sometimes now known as PGP, pelvic girdle pain or symphys pubis dysfunction, where you're basically your ligaments in your pelvis are getting ready for you to uh, have, have a baby. Uh, but unfortunately, sometimes with SPD, it goes too far. And it's a very common complaint, complaint for pregnant women in the last few days or the last week of pregnancy. Right. But mine actually happened when I was nine weeks pregnant and they'd never seen a case like it. Oh, my gosh. And so within three days I was of having any discomfort, I was using a Zimmer frame and within five days I was in a wheelchair. And they realized how quickly my my the kind of one ligament that holds you together, how quickly that was deteriorating. And as a result, all my bones were kind of bashing against each other and I was in just incredible amounts of pain. And at the time I had uh, a four-year-old who just started school. So we had to get her out of the house to school every day. And suddenly I can't move. And we had an 18 month old toddler who was very, very fiercely, strongly independent. And I was pregnant. Wow. So life took a bit of a nosedive. And uh, 10 years ago, I, I kind of thought it was all over, that whatever my life was going to be like was not how I would ever want it to be. Oh, gosh. And there's, there's a photograph that um, I often, often share on social media to kind of show people, however bad things are, you can get better. We went to a party. It was a New Year's Eve party 10 years ago. And by this point, I'd hardly got out of bed for about two and a half, maybe three months, except to go to hospital. Oh my God. And my parents and my husband made me go to this party because it was one of my best friends and they'd just got engaged and it was next door to my parents where I had to live because my house didn't accommodate my wheelchair. And anyway, I got to this party and it was fancy dress and I, I was determined I wasn't getting changed because I it was too painful and I'd basically been in the same clothes for days on end. Oh. And the only way that I would go to this party is we, we sort of hit on this light bulb moment that we would go, my husband and I dressed as characters from little Britain, which I don't know if, right. if your listeners would know this, but it's a, a David Williams sketch show and Mark and Matt Lucas that was very popular 10, 15 years ago. And the joke is that the, the, the carer, is, is always pushing the wheelchair and does everything for um for the right. in the wheelchair but when his back is turned the guy leaps in and out and he you know he's this big fat guy and he's in his filthy vest and his jogging bottoms uh, and he has this bald head with this strag- straggly orange wig and that basically was how I went to the party and right. I was so depressed and I it was such a gargantuan effort to get there that I just decided something had to change and that for me, was your that, aha moment. That was my aha. I cannot, I cannot, if I'm going to live a life that is limited physically, mm-hmm. I have to be able to feel like me and I have mm-hmm. to be able to cope with this. So I went, after the baby was born, which was a few, quite a while after that, I went and sought help with how I felt and I went and saw a hypnotherapist. And that was the start, the catalyst of quite a big transformation for me. Um, which I talk about a lot in my book and I mention a lot on my podcast. And to put this all in context now, 
I am 10 years on, I am fully recovered. And actually I was recovered very quickly, which I'm sure we'll get to on this podcast. I was recovered very quickly. Um, It took me two years until I had no pain. And within a few years, I was then on the red carpets in Hollywood as an award finalist for several awards. And I, I stood there at that point on the red carpets in LA in a cracking pair of heels very very glamorous about Uh far away from how I'd been six seven years before and I decided that I had to share what I'd learned what I'd experienced the lows the highs the way I changed how I think in order to impact other people so that's what I do now at that point I became a motivational speaker and a coach really for people who wanted to have more success in their life um so now hence my podcast and my book are for entrepreneurs and creatives who feel that there's more to them and how do they get there because that's that was very much how I used to feel that's so incredible and I can only imagine from you know I've not had anything as severe as what you've gone through but everybody can relate to you know being under the weather in some sort of way whether it is some illness or whether they've broken a bone or or whatever and it's so easy to get into that that kind of mental mindset uh, where you just kind of go down the the spiral, don't you, downwards. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, you know, when I hear people talk about it, 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 they often seem to be waiting until they feel better for their mind to get better. And it sounds like what you've done is the polar opposite, that you were like, no, I need to shift my mindset. And as soon as you're able to do that, you were able to make progress physically. Yeah. So for me, my desire to be okay was a desire for my children not for myself at this Mm. point I couldn't give a stuff about me I wasn't washing I was avoiding drinking water or liquid of any kind because it hurt too much to go to the toilet it was hard for me to you know have a shower or get in the bath on my own and that's fairly degrading even though my husband was really supportive that's not we'd we'd only been married six months and that's not how you imagine the start of your married life no Uh, and I I just I I knew before I'd had children I'd had I'd been a performer I'd been on stage a lot of theatre very Shakespearean very wordy and I'd I'd always just believed that once I had my third child that I would immediately go back into that life so to feel like it was snatched away from me I was just so full of resentment and anger and bitterness and it was everyone else's fault but mine um and so when I when I went to see this hypnotherapist it was not because I thought I could recover it was physically it was because I had to be able to shift how dark I felt right and the hypnotherapy helped you do that well we didn't actually do hypnotherapy he I didn't know what neuro-linguistic programming was at the time but we had this very deep conversation probably for about two hours And he showed me for the first time how often I was saying things that weren't true or that were an embellishment of the truth uh, and how often I was talking about limitation, anger, resentment, and not just in terms of the disability, actually from things I believed I couldn't have in my life. So to, to to give you several examples of this, he showed me that I was talking constantly about about that I'm always in pain and all I've got to talk about is my disability and my pain and he was like oh that's that's interesting is that true and I said yeah that's all I that's all I've got to talk about there's nothing else in my life and he said okay and he said um what were you doing this morning and I before you came I said well I was watching this morning and I was watching Jeremy Kyle and he's like okay so what (laughs) happened in the show what happened in the show I told him and he said okay so when you were thinking about that and whatever it was that had happened in the show Mm -hmm. where was your pain And I kind of went, oh, I wasn't thinking about it. And he said, Mm -hmm. okay, so now you have the proof that it's not always true that you're always in pain. What else are you not right about? And it was, it was just gentle unravelings of my language, my thoughts, my patterns. Uh, And I, I, I got in this habit that whenever my husband came home from work, I would say, God, I've had such a bad day and I'm so sorry. I can't do more for the children. And I feel so sad about this. When, friends came over to help with the children because I couldn't look after them myself I'd be I'm so sorry it's so bad it's awful I'm so embarrassed no it's so terrible and I wish I could and over and over and over same with my parents same with family Mm. I was just there literally was no space for any other conversation because it was all about how bad is Anna today yes and that puts your attention on how bad you are even if right before I'd been watching EastEnders quite happily yeah 
so, so it just kind of showed me one that I was bumming myself out over and over and over again yeah that I was kind of disallowing any other thoughts any other conversation because I was bringing everybody down with me and and not because I was embellishing because it was my experience but he yeah. showed me that there was choice in what else I noticed yes so we decided after that that I would put in a very firm strategy and I have to say I was desperate so I would have tried anything we put in a very firm strategy that at home I was only allowed to say I'm having a healing day and I was allowed to say it once and that was a cue for my husband then to rearrange everything my care the children's care everything and I was out of those conversations so I didn't have to justify explain look for pity and all of those things that have become habitual and that was that was challenging but what happened was I started to see actually it's not true that I'm always in agony and if I don't have to talk about it I don't have to justify where I am to anybody else then there's space for more conversation and there's space to feel a little bit better and like mentally there was a shift quite quickly and actually within three weeks I was back using a Zimmer frame that's amazing (laughs) and within six weeks I was on my feet enough to get in the car to do the school run I still couldn't do it on my own I couldn't drive yeah but I had I'd gone from not really leaving the house for nearly 18 months to then being present in my children's lives when they go to school and when they get picked up. Uh, and that was, that was a really big hurdle for me. Um, that, yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> incredible. So this, this yeah. is why I love NLP so much because I'm a, I'm a practitioner as well. And I, I tend to deal with survivors of abuse and trauma because that's mm-hmm. my background, but it's the same type of thing we get caught up in this language of you know this has happened to me poor me Mm -hmm. you know this is this is why I can't move forward and and that type of language whether we're talking about illness whether we're talking about something that somebody else has done or said to us that's impacted our lives or whatever that we're actually the ones that are in control of what we do with that now see this is this is one of the major realizations that I had not in that first session but several months later when I went back was that my language was not just about limitation in terms of that disability but limitation in terms of the frustration and how much I was overlooked by other people and as an actor that had massively impacted my career Um, at a point when I was looking to go back into performing potentially and what I came to understand was that I had this constant belief that I didn't fit in and that I didn't belong wherever I went I was always on the edge so if I ever for example in my younger years went for an audition I would be looking for the moment of rejection I'd literally be almost Mm. priming myself bracing myself I wouldn't build connection wouldn't build rapport because I was waiting for the rejection to come right and so for me when you talk about like trauma and things that have happened in the past what we uncovered that was that a lot of that fear about fulfilling my potential about speaking up about being seen which of course as an actor you have to be (laughs) um was actually something I was a traumatic event when I was 16 I was attacked by a gang of girls as a result uh, that was organized by a friend of mine as a result of me speaking up and putting myself out there really to um speak against something that I thought was unjust right and 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 actually in my my subconscious in my programming that then had kind of infiltrated everything all of my thoughts all of my fears all of my relationships all of my ability to proceed in a career or not Mm. um and it was unraveling that that then has allowed me to have you know, incredible levels of success that allowed me then to pick up this career as a voice actor, which initially I'm talking to you now inside what is now a recording, a professional recording studio, but that initially was my airing cupboard. <laughs> and it was actually the only space in the house that fitted the wheelchair. Right. And the reason, the reason that the kind of voice acting thing came about was I, I realized that my li- one of my limitations had been me saying, I can't be a good actor and earn good money and be a good mother so there's lots of models there about what it means to be good but that I had basically decided at the moment I found out I was pregnant that my life was over that's very dramatic but I I do see this a lot and and I couldn't have all the things I wanted if I was a mother and yet family having children was my highest value right so what what was going on there and so 
actually, I, I kind of now believe, yes, of course, I had a physical problem with my pregnancy. But actually, in many ways, I think it was the manifestation of those thoughts of limitation and not being able to have what I wanted, be who I wanted and resentment that actually led me to, to kind of being in that place um, yeah. that, was, that was so dark. That, that's so, amazing yeah and um like from that point from from working with nlp and lots of hypnosis and lots of really changing our language at home the whole family yes that my life started to change and quite dra- quite dramatically and quite quickly so this is what i want to know because you know it's one thing to to find whether it's nlp or any other type of therapy that's going to work for you because there's so many types mm-hmm. right cognitive behavioral therapy there, there's the tapping there's i mean there's just there's so many right yeah. so it's one thing to go to an nlp practitioner or a therapist or you know whoever but there's work that has to be done at home Mm -hmm. right going in and seeing that person is the first step Mm. but then you've got to take on board that whatever it is that you are learning in those sessions Mm. so i want to to know so that's one thing you obviously changed the language that you were using at home you came up with kind of your key phrase with your husband so it's like Mm. i'm only allowed to say this once but when i say it this is what it means and so you had an understanding like a little secret yeah. code between yeah. the two of you but what other like what steps do you think people need to take in order to be able to make real change like what you were able to make so i did a lot of journaling but journaling with intent is what i would describe it as so i do stream of conscious journaling every single morning before I did anything else, before I'd even, other than helping the children, before I did anything else really, before I spoke to anyone else, I would journal for three pages, just getting all of the rubbish running through my head on the page. Mm, But I'd be doing it with, I'd let anything come out. I wouldn't censor myself, but I'd be, I'd have half half an eye, half an awareness open for any time I said something negative about myself and negative about what I could achieve and what I could do um, and about who I was. And those moments of awareness were I would then really examine what am I saying what sits behind that where's that come from and that would really tie in with the NLP work and the hypnosis work that I was doing as well because I I would then think well this is a this is obviously a problem for me if I'm saying it so what do I need to do to counteract that what do I need to feed my awareness with so that it's not just listening to that it has another choice as well I absolutely love that. I mean, you can't make change until you're aware of nice. what's going on, right? And that's a great way to really become aware, just kind of verbal diarrhea it all over the yeah. page. Yeah, no, that, that's it. <laughs> and for me, that, my book's called Get Visible. And for me, I, yeah. I mean, I help people. Uh, for me, a lot of that is about marketing strategies, a lot about the mindset. So I talk about yeah. this in quite a lot of detail because often we're hiding from ourselves yes and I think that we we then if you're journaling like that every day you show up what your real fears are what you really want shows up what you are hiding from what you're fearful of and I'm uh for me that process of becoming visible and becoming very well known in a in a niche industry and then again when I've I've moved on in my my work has happened because I've been honest with myself about what I want without having to pretend that it doesn't matter. Yes. I love that, you know, some people listening and and definitely some guests that have been on the show have thought, okay, so we're either going to talk about personal, you know, things to overcome, or we're going to talk about business and they don't necessarily see that those two things are interchangeable. They are the same. Yeah. So we don't need to switch gears to talk about your business here and talk about the whole, you know, get visible that Mm. that you've kind of created in this brand. Mm. It's all one and the same, isn't it? So so tell us a little bit about that. We don't have to give away all of your, your strategies and your tips and your book. So it it starts, it starts with being just becoming very aware and giving you processes for becoming aware of your language where those thoughts came from what they are much like you would have in an NLP session yeah. or in a timeline therapy session or, or whatever therapy but but realizing that at the moment you made those decisions about yourself and what happened that there were other decisions open to you so I talk yeah. a lot about how much we delete generalize and distort absolutely everything yeah. uh, which you'll you'll well know as a as a practitioner yourself yeah but I, 
but once once you've come to grips with the fact that you're telling yourself you can't do something that that is a habit that is something that has been formed in childhood but it is only a habit then I help people to really look at what is the wealth of experience I've had what is the wealth of education connection potential that I know I have and how can I tell myself first of all that new story that's more empowering that isn't isn't wrong it's not fabricated it's just made up of the stuff you've deleted previously yes so how do you weave this new story about the fact you are credible in what you want to do uh how do you how do you do that when it's been uncomfortable in the past how do you then once once you realize that actually you can deserve to win awards and you can deserve to earn good money and you can deserve to become an expert in your field even if you're just starting then then actually what are the steps you need to take to become prominent within your industry or within you know with your own followers with your own customers who become raving fans what are the steps you need to do so that they know who you are and people know what you do because one of the things I really find with uh, a lot of entrepreneurs and, and business, small business owners is that they hate telling people what they do. Yeah, They're desperately uncomfortable about it. And I find this fascinating because often we're in business because one, we know we can make a difference to people in some way. And two, because we love what we're doing. So why have we got this culture of being embarrassed about the things we want most? Yeah, exactly. So, um, and it's once you are accepting that that it's okay to want the things that you want, that your 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 dreams do matter, your ambitions do matter, and that they are possible if you take the brakes off, then then you can kind of honour yourself in in that way by going after what you want, no matter what your situation looks like. This is the perfect spot for a quick break to talk about the planner that changed my life, daily greatness. These planners will absolutely blow your mind. Far from a traditional planner, these planners help you overcome your weaknesses, focus on the positive, find and follow your purpose and mission in life, set exciting goals, and follow up on those goals. We all know that our outcomes and results in life are determined by our daily habits. These planners give you the foundation for success that you need to make you more likely to succeed at achieving your goals and reaching your potential. Seriously, they're that good. They have their original version, plus one for business, success, yoga, wellness, and parents. That's six versions to help in any situation. To learn more, go to lifelikeyoumeanit.com slash planners. Once again, that's lifelikeyoumeanit.com slash planners. This link will also be in the show notes. Are you struggling with some areas of your life? Disappointed that things have not turned out the way you had hoped or planned? Perhaps you're celebrating your successes in some areas of your life while really feeling you've missed the mark in others. If you've decided you are no longer comfortable with being unhappy, and are ready to do the work at your own pace in the comfort of your own home to change your life to one where you feel confidently successful, fulfilled, and greatly satisfied, then my online mini-course, Becoming Fulfilled and Satisfied with Your Life, is for you. Head on over to lifelikeyoumeanit.com slash fulfilled to register for just £7.20 and crack open your workbook and videos to guide you every step of the way. You'll be tackling your beliefs, how to spot opportunities, and the powerful coaching tool, The Wheel of Life, all with the guidance of me, a qualified NLP practitioner, Reiki master, author, speaker, podcast host, and survivor of 10 years of child abuse. That link again is lifelikeyoumeanit.com slash fulfilled. This link is also in the show notes. This is the perfect spot to take a quick break and tell you about my friend Chris Atley's amazing new online course for coaches, The Coach's Code. This is the perfect course for coaches who know they are meant for greatness and to impact more people and who are tired of grinding it out and spinning their wheels. Look, even the best coaches in the world have the potential to struggle to get their business off the ground. 
Achieving success as a coach happens when you have clearly defined goals, have a roadmap to reach those goals, understand exactly which steps to take, align your thoughts with abundance, and when you manifest and operate your business from a place of flow. Award-winning coach Chris Atley will help you to do just that in her virtual course, The Coach's Code. To get more information and register today, visit lifelikeyoumeanit.com slash coaching course, all one word. This link will also be in the show notes. The Coach's Code, the proven process to build your dream coaching practice at lightning speed. Yes, absolutely. Like I, I totally agree. I think there's, I've talked about this a few times on the podcast already, but I definitely notice not so much now in my mid forties and the people that I've chosen to surround myself with, but definitely in my younger years, there was a real issue with people being able to express themselves even in their close friendship circle Mm -hmm. uh, and celebrate their successes. It was, it was like they felt like they were bragging Mm -hmm. or like whoever else is in the group that was having the biggest struggle. Everybody had to lower their energy and their expectations down to where that person was so that they didn't rub it in their face type of thing. Rather than now I find in my friendship circle anyways, it's, it's the opposite. Now it's like, no, we gravitate towards the one with the highest energy. Mm -hmm. And because we know that if we can just shift the way that we're looking at some things, then we can pull ourselves out of this rut that we're in. And why wouldn't we want to be celebrating? Celebrating does not mean bragging. And even if we are bragging, who cares? We've done something amazing. (laughs) We're helping people. (laughs) I think, I think that's really interesting what you said, because if you have a business or you're doing something that you know can impact other people, why shouldn't you let the world know that you're making a difference? Yeah. Ultimately, when we, when we kind of really tap into why we're here, isn't that it? Isn't that the reason to help lift each other and have more happiness, more freedom of thought um, more connection so I'm fascinated by the whole bragging and boasting fear that people have and that very often comes down to like I talked about before that fear that I don't belong that I don't fit in yes and for me I would I would dim my potential and dim what I was capable of to fit in with people who actually I didn't like (laughs) in order to in order to have that sense of belonging whereas actually now I'm older and now I know and understand all this stuff I'm I'm bringing into my world the most incredible friends and peers because I'm being me I'm not sitting I have this kind of analogy of like someone like Harry Potter sitting under the stairs hiding away pretending that there's something they're not Uh, and actually it doesn't have to be that you go out and you do all these things and you're fighting to prove yourself. Actually, when you're more comfortable with who you are and what you are able to achieve without telling yourself, I can't, I can't, I'm not, not good enough. Yeah. Actually, you'll, you'll just meet some amazing people because you'll, you'll expand your world. Yes, exactly. And like I know, so you were just up as finalist for Businesswoman of the Year, which is incredible. And you're up for the very similar award uh, yeah. with another organization, aren't you? Which is absolutely incredible. Congratulations, Thank first you. of all. And this is, I think, a great example of that, right? Tooting your horn to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. To me, that raises the energy and just kind of sends that out into the universe, if you will, that you're excited, you're happy, you're grateful, right? And that attracts the same type of energy back to you. And it's really, good one, sorry. It's been interesting for me recently. I've had a roller coaster of an incredible few months. I launched a podcast that became um, number three on iTunes in the UK and number nine um, in business for globally. Uh, And then I had a book launch that went straight to number one in 11 categories. And I've had, you know, I've been up for National Business Women of the Year in several different high profile awards recently. And I've been, I kind of feel that my job now that I've uncovered this stuff is to show other other capable beings that it's okay to put yourself out there and and what's been interesting is a lot of people message me to say oh my gosh I find it so inspiring and and you you keep me going but I do get some messages from people quite close to me saying you're really triggering me you're really triggering me that you're celebrating your success the way you are because you're so um 
you're, you're, you're telling people all the time of what you've achieved. And I, I said, well, that's, it's really interesting that you say that because one, I'm doing it. Of course, I'm proud of what I've done. It's okay yeah. for me to be proud that I have turned my life around. And two, if I don't tell people, then I can't get my message out there, if that yeah. makes sense. So it's a positioning exactly. thing as well. And actually, I did a good conversation with some, a friend who told me I was really triggering her. She said, what I've realized by thinking through why, why I was annoyed when I've seen some of your posts recently is it's not about that. It's the fact that I know I'm just as capable and yet mm -hmm. I don't tell people so I'm not getting the clients. Yes. So it's really interesting. Really yeah, interesting. It, it really, it really is. And um, yeah, I, I find that the same sort of, of thing. I haven't had a lot of people who have told me to my face that I'm triggering them with some of the things that, you, you know, because I've also uh, was a finalist for NLP Practitioner of the Year yeah. and, um, and had my book and, and have the, the podcast launch and, and all of that. And there's so many, you know, I've been on different radio shows and things like that because part of what my motto is and my desire with my business is to shed the stigma of being abused to try to show people mm -hmm. first of all to be the voice for people that don't feel that they can speak up for whatever reason um, mm -hmm. right they don't have to explain themselves somebody else can step up and talk about it and that can be me I'm in a yeah. place where I can do that um, and so yeah I, I find that you know getting out there and and having my voice heard and having my story heard is really important to me because I want people to be able to understand that when you are abused, you can turn things around and find success for yourself. You can yeah. learn how to deserve better, how yeah. to want better, and that that is okay. And so part of that shedding the stigma is, yes, trying to, to shed the stigma of, of talking about it. So you don't want people to feel awkward and that type of thing, but also to show that there is such thing as happiness after something like abuse. And so every time I get on the radio or I get in a magazine or something like that, that's a big deal to me because I am shedding the stigma. That's like my number one goal. And so, yeah, I'm going to be singing that from the rooftops. Yeah. And so while I haven't had a lot of people that have said, you're really triggering me with your success, I have noticed some people that were really close with me just kind of fading off into the distance. So that's okay. So that's okay. Exactly. Right. Mm. It's, it's going to work for them. However, it's going to work for them. Right. Mm. But I just find that, you know, being finalist for NLP practitioner of the year. Yeah. I didn't get the award, but I was so proud of myself mm. for making it to finalist. I posted all over the place, me and my fancy dress and my fancy high heels. And, you, you know, I really took advantage of the fact mm. that I was there and I had all this photographic evidence of it. Whereas some people have said, oh, wow, I'm really surprised. Like if I'd be, I'd be concerned about sharing all of that before I knew that I didn't or did win the mm -hmm. award, just in case I did it. I See, this, this is an interesting that. thing as well. That, and that says a lot about how people really feel about themselves because yeah. actually I, I, I did a little post about this at the weekend because I didn't win the one I went for. And, um, I kind of all the way kind of just thought it's amazing it's amazing I've been nominated it's amazing I'm a finalist yep. and, and then in the room when they're kind of calling out everyone's names and they did all of the finalists you have that massive adrenaline surge and you kind of think well yeah. actually I'm here now I would like to get up there I would yes. like to go home with the trophy and so I did I did post about how I felt about that yeah but for me even though I didn't win I'm not lost I've not yeah. lost anything I've made more yeah. connections I've positioned my business I've positioned myself um yeah. and and I, I, I'm getting validation and recognition for my business. Not that I need those things because I know what I do is powerful and works anyway. Yes. But many people will be drawn to work more with someone who has those accolades. Yeah. So why wouldn't you put your business in the running for things like that? Exactly. And I'm not embarrassed to have not got the award. I'm no. so immensely proud that I, in a short span of time, that I was able to be nominated, shortlisted, and a finalist, right? Mm -hmm. So the top three for an international coaching award, like that, yeah, that to me is just like, what? Like, like I'll be screaming that from the rooftop yeah, absolutely. forever, right? <laughs> right? And if I do one day have the honor of actually winning it, it, it it's, 
I'm still going to be singing the praises of what it felt like to be a finalist in yeah. that, that first time around, right? Yeah. I think yeah. it's incredible. And it all comes down to shifting your perspective of things, right? Mm. It's not about what I've lost. It's about what I've gained. Mm. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So tell us more about what it means to get visible. So getting visible is about first recognizing things about yourself that you actually do really want and noticing those times when that inner critic, you start telling yourself, I can't and I don't and I won't and it'll never happen because that's actually sabotaging you. That is the thing that will stop you from getting out there, being seen, getting the results that you want. Mm -hmm. And once you understand all of that and you've really worked on, on that stuff, then you can put into play lots of marketing strategies, lots of things about how you network, how you connect, how you describe what you do, how you describe the impact of the work that you could have, how you, you know, get yourself on podcasts because you understand that the work isn't about you. It's about what else is out there yes. um, and what and the impact and the, that ripple effect that you can have. Uh, and, and that actually you, you can completely transform the amount of impact and influence that you have. And then that actually then allows you to increase your income. But it starts with how you feel about yourself. Yeah. And many people say, I feel like I'm playing small. Yeah. Or I feel like I'm hiding in some way and I don't know what that's about. So my book, Get Visible, is first working out what that is for yourself and then the strategies to implement it to have more success for your business. Amazing. So what do you have some top tips for our audience for increasing their visibility? So obviously we've talked quite a lot today about the mindset part of it. And I think it does have to start there. So journaling is a big part of what I talk about. Stream of conscious journaling, but being aware of what you're saying and turning those statements around. The second thing is then crafting the story of you, what you've done, what, why you deserve to be doing what you're doing now and why you, you, you are forming yourself as the go-to expert if, if you're in business because right. nobody else is ever going to sing your praises for you until yeah. you're incredibly successful. Then it starts to happen. Yes. But you, have to, you have to learn to shout first. And, and being comfortable with that and then the third thing really is podcasts are really powerful right now so yeah. work out what it is you want to talk about work out what you have to offer and, and give value to the world and utilize a platform that is growing exponentially because this is this is where people are listeners are so engaged listeners often will take action to follow to purchase to buy to get the book because they are really loving podcast material and that's why you know that's why my podcast is successful that's why I make it part of my my weekly routine that I come on other podcasts because in terms of getting your message out there and perhaps sharing the really dark parts of your story because story is really important I think podcasts yeah. are one of the most intimate ways we can do that and affect wider change absolutely oh I, I love that I love your tips because you know, I've worked with a marketing coach at the beginning of my business and a, a, a success coach, really, at the beginning of my, my business, two separate coaches, to really wrap my head around you know, what my target audience was and or is, um, who you know, what it is that I want to offer, what their pain points are, mm -hmm. what it is that I offer as the solution for all that. And all of that is really absolutely necessary, right? I mean, you have to understand mm -hmm. your audience to the point of, you know, knowing what magazines that they would read or if they even would read or would they throw on a podcast instead or, you know, all of that kind of nitty gritty. But even with those two separate coaches, nobody ever delved into the whole, you know, what, what's your inner dialogue? What are the inner beliefs about what you believe you're capable of, what you deserve, those types of, of things. And luckily, because that is the work that I do, mm. <laughs> right, with survivors and just with people that suffer with imposter syndrome and stuff like that as well, that I was able to do that for myself. But I found it really interesting that, wow, I would have thought at the very beginning of this process, maybe even before I get clear on who my target audience is, and maybe even before I get clear on what it is that I want to offer, I need to get clear on all the ways that I would be holding myself back, all of the things that I've deleted from my life, that if I bring them back in and look at them in a slightly different way, I'll actually see that they are all incredible strengths that I have that motivate me forward, that are gifts that I can offer to other people, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Mm. And so I love 
that that's really what your your top your your top two out of your three is is getting to know you. It, it's absolutely about getting to know you because at the end of the day, if you don't believe you're good enough or you don't believe you're going to charge, you can charge properly a decent amount that's livable for yourself. One, you won't send that email. You won't do the social media post. You might not do the video or you'll do a live and then you won't do another one for a month or so because you've told yourself that people are judging you or you're not good enough or you're rubbish. Um, and, and you're not allowing yourself to explore, to create, to have adventure because you've constantly got that voice, that very strong. We all have it and it doesn't go, but you're letting that overpower you. Yeah. And and for me, the business business success, certainly for me, has only come about because I've understood when I'm holding myself back and I, I notice very strongly now. Sometimes it can take me a day or two when I've fallen into a pattern of saying something that's not helpful. You know, particularly if we've had stress and we've had family issues, uh, you, you know, your thoughts and language can go a little bit wonky, even with the yeah. most mu- m- most amount of mindset background that, that I have and, um, and other people have. But as soon as you notice that language, what are you going to do to change it? Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's not about never having those thoughts again. I mean, even the most successful people in the world are going to have days when they're like, oh, I suck. <laughs> right? They're just something's going to have yeah. triggered them. So what's your strategy when you find yourself having that type of language? What do you do, Anna? Interestingly, I had a scenario like this just a few weeks ago. We, I was having migraines every few weeks. And uh, I thought, oh, they're probably hormonal. Maybe it's because I'm in my early 40s. Mm. And then I thought, no, this is silly because I know that there'll be, some, there'll be some reason why I'm doing that. Why is my subconscious giving me this experience, if you like? Yeah. So I stopped and I, I kind of asked myself, I journaled it out, but I was really clear on the question, well, how is this headache, how is this migraine serving me? And the answer that, that came up from me, from thinking about it, is that it makes me stop. Why does it? Why is it important that I stop? Mm. It's important that I stop because I'm so passionate about what I do that I don't stop. So yeah. if a migraine is then going, actually, that's when you need to retract and go to bed for a couple of days so that I can then replenish and come back stronger. Then, uh, then actually, it's serving me. So what can I do to make sure I don't need this headache? Yeah. To make sure I need the rest. So it might well be I need to schedule two days out of my diary every month. That's not the weekend because my weekends are crazy with three children, <laughs> but that I am allowing myself that space. And interestingly, since having that conversation with myself, I haven't had a migraine. So um, yes. sometimes it's just realizing that the behaviors that we're displaying and manifesting are coming from a, a, a deeper thought about what you need yes. and what you're stopping yourself having. I love that. Is it so true? It used to be a big expression when I lived in Canada. So I don't know if it, if it is as much here in England. But it was really, you know, you run yourself ragged and when you end up with a a sickness, so cold or flu or something like that, it was the big expression that you were, it was your body's way of telling you that you needed to slow down, right? That was everybody said, oh, you've got, you've got a sinus infection. You must need to slow down, right? Everybody said it, but there was no talk about how to actually implement that (laughs) change, right? In fact, at that time, the concept of self-care was really thought of as being very frivolous and selfish Mm -hmm. that you, you were not the best mom or the best businesswoman or the best, you know, whatever, if you took time out of your day for yourself, but yet everybody recognized that when your immune system is compromised or when you've got signs like this coming from your body, that it's a sign that you are not listening to the needs of your body and that you need to do that so I find that a really interesting juxtaposition isn't Mm. it it's like Mm. well what how could you notice it on one hand and then on the other hand kind of poo poo yeah Yeah, the whole idea of self-care so we're in a much better place now but interestingly I find as much as we talk about self-care and we promote self-care now we don't talk as often or maybe that's just because I've moved to the UK about this concept of needing to slow down and your body giving you mm. all the signs that you that you need to be able to listen, right? It's putting yeah. up the red flag. You yeah, physically absolutely. can't do anything when you've got these headaches mm. or, you know, when you've got that, you know what it's like when you've got a cold and your brain just can't function type of mm. thing, right? It's like, mm. yeah, this is a sign for you to do something 
different. Different. Yeah. Look yeah. after yourself. Yeah, exactly. I love it. So what is the award that you are up for now? And when will we find out about the uh, results of that? I, it's on Thursday and I'm up, actually up for three different categories. One is Business Woman of the Year for a micro business. So that's under 50 employees and it's just me and my freelance team. So yeah. uh, I'm up for that one. Business Woman of the Year for Southern England and Best New Business. It's at the National Business Women's Awards. So, oh um, and again, you know, because I've, I've brought so many amazing people into my life since I've been on this, this kind of epic entrepreneurial and creative journey over the last three years, that I'm going to be in a room full of my friends and my peers. And actually, as much as anything, I'm just looking forward to the function yes. <laughs> um, and, and, and what will be will be. But regardless, whether I win or I don't, it's still positioning me as, as a go-getter and as someone, someone to watch, I suppose. And yes. that, again, ties in with the get visible thing. Um, because you know when you when I work in the coaching space and who do you who are you going to want to work with more you're going to work with someone who's never had any accolades and isn't charging very much or you're going to work with someone who's actually getting results and recognition for what they're doing Um, and and so it's, it's all part and parcel of that. I love it. So now I'm going to put links to your social media mm-hmm. and your website and whatnot in the show notes. But how can people who are listening, how can they find out more about you? The best place is to go to my website. I've got links there to Entrepreneurs Get Visible, which is my podcast and also to my book uh, and all sorts of incredible ways that you can work with me. Um, so that's AnnaParkerNaples.com. And as I said, as Lisa said, the, the, the links will be in the show notes too. Excellent. Thank you so much, Anna, for being on the oh, show. You just gave so much, so many benefits, so many tips, so much inspiration to the listeners. It's really been fantastic. And congratulations and good luck. Thank you. <laughs> I loved every part of this interview with Anna Parker Naples. I love her openness and honesty with us, sharing the struggles she faced when wheelchair bound and her revelations on how she was holding herself back. It seems strange at first to think that you need to make the time to search deep within to figure out what is making you tick. I mean, shouldn't you just know this? That's the point, really, isn't it? We make assumptions every day about the decisions we make and how life is unfolding around us. But does that make those assumptions true? Look at Anna's examples today. Her realization that she wasn't always thinking or talking about her pain, along with the conscious journaling, allowed her to gain an awareness of just how often she was using negative language, how it highlighted her deeper beliefs, and how they were impacting her decisions. This awareness then allowed her to start changing her language towards herself and others in all areas of her life. And look at how visible Anna is now. That's exactly why she's adamant that getting to know yourself is the key to changing everything, including getting visible as an entrepreneur. Thank you to my guest today, multi-award winning business coach Anna Parker Naples for sharing her story and wealth of knowledge with us today. As usual, you can find links to Anna's social media platforms and website where you can find her book, podcast, and information about her services in the show notes. Just go to lifelikeyoumeanit.com slash blog. And thank you for listening to another episode of the Life Like You Mean It podcast. Now go make a list of all your most common expressions and sentences you use each day as a start to understanding the language you are using. Thanks for listening to the Life Like You Mean It podcast. Head on over to the show notes for this episode and all past episodes at www.lifelikeyoumeanit.com forward slash blog. If you love the show, leave a rating and review. Share that love by spreading the word. Post a link to your social media. Share it with your friends and follow or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast hosting site. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, remember to live your life on purpose by living life like you mean it.